Hey everyone, Jada Ray here, and this video is for my fellow military members in the reserves or guard. This video I want to talk about BAH. This video is not necessarily for those active duty. I'll explain why later. But if you are interested in joining the reserves or guard one day, then you might want to watch because there are different types of BAH. I will be going on orders soon and I need to put in a 336, etc, etc. But these orders are short term orders, so I will not be receiving the full BAH pay. And let me go ahead and break this down. All right, so what is BAH? It stands for Basic Housing Allowance. And basically this applies for every single person who wears the uniform, AKA uniformed service members. Now this applies if you live off base. And in this example, we'll talk about E5, okay? So first, let's talk about how you get paid in the military. You get base pay plus something called BAS, basic allowance for a substance, basically your food, and BAH, plus extra pay. Now, let me back this up. This is basically for those active duty or for those on active orders. Okay, back to talking about E5. In this example, we have an E5. Um, they've been active for six years. They are stationed at Lackland Air Force Base. And the zip code is 78236. Base pay is calculated based on your rank plus your service. So for this person, they're getting $3,273.30 per month. Their BAS is 406.98 and BAH is $1,410. We're going to ignore the extra pay for now. So basically in 2022, according to the rates, they are getting $5,090.28 per month for active orders. Pretty simple, right? Anyway, back to BAH. So BAH was actually established in January 1998, where it took place, it replaced the VHA and BAQ, which stands for Variable Housing Allowance and Basic Allowance for Quarters. I won't go into detail about why it replaced it and etc, etc, but let's jump on to the definition. Defined by the DOD, BHA is allowance for uniformed service members when military housing is unavailable. And this, my friends, only applies for the uniformed service members within the United States. So if you're living outside of the United States, congratulations on your overseas assignment. But the BAH is not for you. You will, fall, you will fall underneath the Overseas Housing Allowance, or OHA. So I don't know very much about that. All I know is that it's pretty limited. Um, you get the set rate for the entire country. So in this video, we're going to focus on BAH. Okay, so the BAH is actually run by the DTMO. Defense Travel Management Office, which is actually underneath the DOD, underneath the Department of Defense. Every year, the DTMO collects data from approximately 300 military housing areas in the United States, including Hawaii and Alaska. And they also take an average of the cost of utilities in all of these different markets, which includes electricity, heat, water, and sewage. So all of that is calculated and put into the BAH um, computation. And that's basically profiles for apartments, townhouses, duplexes, single and family, single family rental units of varying sizes. And there's actually another chart. Let me just go ahead and throw that up here. Bing! And um, yeah, it's pretty interesting. The BAH is uh, <laughs> a little bit complicated. But all right, so let's jump to the next area. This is pretty interesting. I always thought that the BAH was supposed to fund 100% of your housing, but no, it actually covers only 95%. Won't go into that, but ever since 2019, 5% of however much housing is supposed to cost in your area is supposed to come out of your pocket and pay for renter's insurance. Thank you to the Secretary of Defense back in 2015. So now, 
let's talk about the different types of BAH. We have BAH type 1, BAH type 2, also called BAHRC slash T or reserve component transient, BAH diff or differential, and partial BAH. For us in the reserve cert guard, we are mostly concerned about BAH type 1 or type 2, but I'll still, you know, go over the others. BAH type 1. You have to be on orders for 30 days or more to get BAH type 1. This is the type that I've been talking about the entire time, and it depends on your rank, location, and if you have dependents. It doesn't matter if you have one dependent or 10 dependents, it's whether or not you have at least one dependent. Of course, you have to not be living in government quarters, which usually doesn't apply to us in the reserves or guard. So, Oftentimes, you're either on Title 10, Title 32, STAT, aka Special Training, Annual Training, um, orders. It doesn't matter what kind of orders you are on. You just need to be on orders that are officially marked for 30 days or more. BAH Type 2 applies if your orders are 29 days or less. This one is basically all across the country everybody gets the same amount depending on rank and whether or not you have dependents again it doesn't matter if you have one dependent or ten dependents as long as you answer the question yes or no on if you have dependents this is approximately 1 16th pay of type 1 is what I heard but we're gonna do some calculations and um, let's see what's actually going on so BAH type 2 it is going to be less than BH type 1. So if your unit puts you on some orders, make sure they do not give you two sets of orders for 29 days. Make sure it's at least 30 days or more if they're giving you that many orders and if they're giving you two different sets. Because even one day break in service, you will qualify for type 2 and not type 1. BAH differential, just for your knowledge, that's if you're living in government housing, for example, if you're active duty and you're living in the dorms, but you have to pay child support, that child support has to be equal or more than the BH differential in order for you to get that. Partial BH is also for those living in government quarters, aka the dorms, and usually if you're active duty, you get partial BH and that's per month. Let's look at an example. Say your duty station is Lackland Air Force Base in Texas. The zip code is 78236. You're an E5 of six years. Now your reserves are guard, so that means that you haven't been living on base the entire time, so that whole question on whether or not you live on base doesn't apply to you. And this also applies if you go to basic training and tech school and etc. Just make sure you turn in a lease agreement or something that states that you pay for your rent. That way you can qualify for BAH when you do go. Um, okay, you got orders for either 30 days or 10 days. Your orders for 30 days will qualify for BAH type 1. Your orders for 10 days, you will get BAH type 2. BAH type 2 is the same nationwide regardless of your zip code. BAH type 1, the order with the 30 days, you'll get that BAH. Without dependents, you'll get $1,410 because it's based on your rank, location, and whether or not you have dependents. Remember that question? Do you have dependents? Yes or no? Now, if you said yes to dependents, that means you will get $1,791 every month for those orders of 30 days. Orders of 10 days, you will get, excuse me, I did make a mistake. The top one is with dependents. The bottom one will be without dependents. You'll look on the chart and it'll show you that you'll get $1,080.90 per month with type 2. But you take that number, you divide it by 30, and then you multiply it by however many days you're going to be on orders and then you'll get what you are due. So in this case, they will be on orders for 10 days and you'll get $36 per day. As a result, you'll get $360.30 for that time in service. 
Without dependents, your total will be $270. If you're an E5 getting partial for some reason you're living in the dorms has active duty, you'll get $8.70 per month. If you're active and you are getting that BH differential, you'll get $298.50 and the child support has to be equal or more than that amount. So in this video, we talked about BAH type 1 and BAH type 2. We also talked about the other ones, but we're going to focus mostly on type 1 and type 2. Type 1, make sure your orders are 30 days or more so you can get the full amount of BAH. Type 2, your orders will be 29 days or less. Type 1 is based on rank, location, and whether or not you have dependents. Type 2, you will take the total inside one of those charts, divide it by 3, multiply that by the number of days that you will be on orders. Type 2 is ranked on rank and dependents, regardless of where you are in this country. Please let me know if all of that made sense or not. This is basically for my guard and reserve, just to let you know what you're going to make on these orders. All right, so if possible, get those 30 days or more. If not, at least you know what you're going to make. And again, if your unit tries to break apart your, um, your orders into two 29-day orders or give you a break in service, please, please talk to them because that's a disservice okay so remember 29 days or less is type 2 30 days and more type 1 regardless of what kind of orders you're on all right good luck out there and talk to you later bye